this video we'll have a look at how we can tie in the custom uh, drop-down box with uh, list control and have that uh, populate a uh, SQL table as well and have it all run through the list control. So here's our list and here's our um, custom drop-down. We'll go ahead and we'll select a record and we'll see that uh, we have a payment type of one and um, the record is showing this is a payment type field here is showing a record of one and because it's one uh, the way that we have things set up in our uh, in our table I just drag this over uh, you can see uh, Visa is one uh, MasterCard is two and uh, American Express is uh, three for an ID and uh, you'll see as soon as that uh, record is, is selected then the uh, appropriate value is pushed into the uh, drop-down box. If we select a record without um, a selection for a payment, then our um, drop-down is rebuilt but uh, with nothing automatically selected. And um, of course to make a change here, if we were to select uh, MasterCard here, we could save the record and you'll see that it's ready to be synchronized and then we can just synchronize it as well. And I'll just push that back again. So let's have a look to see how we did this. Uh, this um, field, by the way, uh, can be hidden, so let, we're going to go ahead and do that as well. So here's a payment type field, because you, you don't want to see that. It's, it's just an extra field that ties into the database and to the, uh, and to the list control, because the drop-down isn't specifically bound to, uh, to any data. So we're just using this extra field for that. Uh, and we'll go ahead and take a look at our code. So in on select, what we do is we go ahead and we get the payment type that uh, is showing up at our list. We set a variable for ourselves. It needs to be a global variable. Um, to uh, to a null value because we uh, we need to find out whether we're we're getting something back from our uh, drop down or not. If the um, payment type is uh, not null, then we go ahead and process uh, the rest of everything. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to get the list items from the um, drop down, and then we're going to process each one of the list items. So we're going to go ahead and grab its value which is shown up here and we're going to then compare the value coming from our list to the values in the drop-down list. And as soon as we have a value then uh, we're going to set, as soon as the values match, then we're going to set our uh, drop-down index to the index of the uh, item that we've chosen because um, if we just pop back here and we drop this down um, you'll remember that uh, Visa was actually number one in our table, MasterCard was two and American Express was uh, one. But this is showing up in, in our drop-down, this is an, a zero-based index. And um, currently, I think by, by default, the uh, items, uh, if you have a description in here, are uh, sorted alphabetically. So since it's a zero-based index, in our drop-down, American Express is actually zero, MasterCard is one, and Visa is two. So what we do ha need to do is match the payment ID from the table to the value of the list item. And when we have that list item, we need to get its index. And that's what we're doing here. So as soon as we have our, uh, we get our list item value, which is one, two, or three. As soon as the what we've selected, which is coming from our list as a payment type, is equal to the value that we're currently looking at in our loop, then we're going to grab the index of uh, what we're working with, which is passed into the fun into the function here from our, our dot each. And as soon as that happens, and we have it, and we do have a match, then we return false to break out of the uh, the dot each loop. So now we've got an index, and uh, we go ahead and we test again and make sure that uh, uh, DD index is not equal to null because we set it up here. So if it's not equal to null, then we can go ahead and use the um, the DD slick uh, uh, method called select and pass in the value of the index that we've already found, and that sets the uh, the drop down default value. 
So that shows up as whatever we have in our data. Um, if DD index is null, then we go ahead and we destroy the uh, drop down box and then we just go ahead and rebuild it. Um, we, and we've got a function here called build CC drop down, so we'll go ahead and have a look at that. Client side on render, uh, when the UX is initially rendered, we called build CC drop down. And then we have a function here called build CC drop down, which actually builds our list, which is the, which is what the original code was. And uh, I think that's about it. So again, what happens is we select number two, that's our payment, that's saved in our data. We get its value. We look through all the indexes, all the, the items rather, from our drop down list. We find that item number two matches um, the value in this particular item. And we get its index, which happens to be two in this case. And then we can display it properly. Thanks for having a look.